All right. Hello, good morning, everyone. And welcome to this webinar on digital audiovisual, uh, audiovisual marketing for hospitality and tourism SMEs. My name is Leonie Hehn. I work for the Barcelona Chamber of Commerce. We are organizing this webinar in the framework of a project called Turbid. It's a European project that is funded uh, by the COSME program. And uh, we are hosting a series of webinars in the framework of this project in collaboration with Seth, the Barcelona School of Tourism, Hospitality and Gastronomy. And I'm very happy uh, that Enrique Lopez from Seth uh, has organized together with um, me and uh, some other collaborators this webinar and has put together a very nice set of speakers for us today and I'm very much looking forward uh, to hear what they have to share with us so without any uh, further ado I would like to pass on the word to Enrique uh, so he can give us a short introduction thank you very much Thanks, Leonie, for the introduction. Good morning, and welcome to all the attendants of this webinar today on the Turbid project about audiovisual marketing for hospitality and tourism in a digital context. My name is Enrique Lopez. I'm a lecturer and research at the Barcelona School of Tourism, Hospitality and Gastronomy. I am also the curator of these webinars and of the digitalization and technology Turbid community. This is our third webinar that we organize within the Turbid project. Thank you again for your trust, Seth. The first webinar was dedicated to customer experience, the second one to the metaverse, and this third one to audiovisual marketing in the digital landscape. One of the marketing areas that has had the most importance in recent years in our sector. And currently, it has become a key element in the marketing strategies, communication, promotion, branding, among other topics of our tourism, hospitality, and gastronomy organization. And the reason is evident. A large part of our tourists value this type of content in their customer journey, especially in their initial phases of awareness and consideration. This is a premise that this webinar and its speaker will take into account in the contributions led by our colleague, Ivana Emeño, actress and host of the Terra Check-in 2023 International Hospitality Film Awards. Thank you, Ivana. Thanks. Thank you also to Pera Cabañas from Fundació Climent Guitar for his fundamental collaboration in this webinar and the entire Terra Check-in project. Thank you all for your attendance. And now I give the floor to Ivana Niño, our host. Ivana, please. Yeah. Thank you very much, Enrique, for your kind introduction and for having me here today, thank you. And welcome to all the members of our audience who cover a wide range of tourism-related SMEs and freelance professionals. In this webinar, we will explore, as you well know, the importance of audiovisual marketing in the communication and marketing of SMEs in the hospitality and tourism sectors. For this purpose, we will be discussing video production, audiovisual digital marketing, marketing trends and strategies, and social media platforms, among others. These topics are key to success in our industry and allow us to stand out from competition and reach a broader audience while driving the growth and revenue of our organization. Today, we will learn to introduce current trends in the field of digital audiovisual marketing, to transmit the key concepts for correct use of digital audiovisual marketing, and to share good practices of digital audiovisual marketing in the hospitality and tourism SMEs. To this end, four outstanding experts in the field are going to share their knowledge and experience with us. And these are Professor Eugeni Osaka, Research Director at the Barcelona School of Tourism, Hospitality and Gastronomy SET. Santi Valdeperez, Audiovisual Producer, Trainer and and CEO of Terras Landscape Travel and Communication. Hugo Marcos, General Secretary of the International Committee of Tourism Film Festival, CIFFT, and Tourism Communication Consultant. And last but not least, Elizabeth Keegan, Managing Director of Tourism in UDET. It is a pleasure to gather you all here today, and we are eager to hear you share your perspectives and ideas. So, 
I think it would be a great idea if you introduce yourselves and your projects a little further to start warming up. But, and I'm sorry to say that, but I'd like to add that we're on a very, very, very tight schedule. So we'd kindly ask you to be as brief and concise as possible. Four minute stops would be ideal. Thank you very much. And Eugenie, the floor is yours. You can unmute yourself, Eugenie. I think you're muted. I think I have. <laughs> okay, okay. So, uh, good morning. Uh, and first of all, I would like to, to thank the organization to, to invite me. It's a, it's a pleasure and an honor to share with you uh, this morning. As you said, Ivana, in my brief presentation, I'm sure you not more than three minutes, I would like to introduce uh, the role of the audiovisual in our university as you know, linked uh, to research and, and teaching. Um, THET is the, is the leading higher education school in tourism, hospitality. Sorry, I don't know if I can. Yes. OK, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, as I said, THET is the leading higher education school in tourism, hospitality, and astronomy, an affiliated uh, center to, of the University of Barcelona. Uh, the audiovisual is, is very present in the two pillars of our organization, of our university, both in research and in teaching. In terms of research, uh, we support the development of applied uh, research and knowledge transfer. And in this sense, uh, we have three groups of research, or three research groups. Turcid, the research group in tourism, culture and territory. The second one, Gratir, uh, research group in tourism accommodation and uh, food service industry. And the third one in cuisine and gastronomy research group. Uh, these three groups act as a cornerstone of uh, tourism, hospitality, and gastronomy knowledge. And beyond the use of the audiovisual as a training tool in the bachelor degrees in tourism, we have uh, a specific subject dedicated to uh, cinema and literature. So, in general, in general, the, the audiovisual industry and feature films and series in particular are becoming increasingly crucial for tourist managers, tourism managers. Film and image reach uh, millions of people worldwide and if used appropriately, can become a vital tool in marketing and tourism promotion. So, to be more specific, in Tourseed, the first group as I named it, uh, we have a line research of tourism and audiovisual sector around uh, three or four different areas, such uh, film, film tourism as a promotional tool. The second one, the influence of films and series on the image of destinations. The third, the creation and structuring of a tourist offer based on movies and series. And the last but not the least, the different impacts of film tourism. And finally, concerning the, the subject or in the bachelor's degree, named Cinema Literature in Tourism, uh, we aim to present um, the close relation between tourism, literature, literature and or cinema, as well as the, the evolution of uh, these new types of uh, tourism. Uh, tourism modalities that uh, allow destinations and tourism companies to gain in competitiveness and differentiation. That's all. Thank you. <laughs> that was very brief and concise. Thank you very much. Yeah, Jenny. okay. <laughs> Thank you. So we now love to hear about you. Santi, it's your turn. Thank you, Ivana. Uh... <laughs> Good morning. Uh, a little, a little bit of uh, music to warm up. 
Uh, thanks for inviting me to, to share this webinar with, with all of you. As uh, Ivana mentioned before, I'm a communication consultant, filmmaker, and also CEO of uh, Terrace Landscape and Travel Communication, together with the SET Foundation, the Main Guitar Foundation, and Jordi Commerce Foundation. We are organizing since last year Terrace Check In. Terrace Check In is a part of a Terrace Festival. Uh, the member that uh, represents Spain in the CF circuit since 2019. Well, uh, what are Terrace Festival and Terrace Check-in? These projects are much more than, than travel video award ceremonies. I would say that both Terrace Festival and Terrace Check-in are meeting points and lighthouses that showcase the best practices and the latest trends in, in the, the travel video. As you have seen in this short video that uh, shows the highlights of the last edition uh, hosted by the SET Foundation, this project wants to combine uh, meetings, network, uh, also cultural experiences, and obviously to recognize the best uh, travel uh, videos. So, um, Terrace Check-in is a festival focused on videos that promote tourism services such as accommodation, but also transportation, restaurants, thematic parks, spa and wellness facilities, or travel technology. So the legal terms of the, of the competition that can be found on our website, will you guide and explain everything concerning to the competition for those who uh, maybe have produced a video and want to participate in this, in this event that will take place in Lloret de Mar on next uh, September 13. And uh, later on, uh, I will give you some more details and only want to thank all the partners that make uh, possible our journey, starting by the Catalan Tourism Board, Diputació de Barcelona, Diputació de Girona, and all the partners that support us from the, from the beginning. Okay. Is that all, Santi? Okay, great. <laughs> You're doing a great job. Thank you very much. <laughs> Making it uh, way easier. Okay, so it is now the turn of Hugo Marcos. So when you're ready, Hugo. Hi, Ivana. Good morning to everyone. Thank you. First of all, thank you for inviting me. It's always a pleasure to share a panel with uh, such uh, professional and beautiful people. So thank you for that opportunity. Uh, let's introduce a little bit SIFT, what I'm doing. So SIFT is the International Committee of Tourism Film Festivals. Uh, it was created in 1989, and uh, basically we bring together the, the best international and corporate tourism film festivals together in an awards initiative, in an awards uh, initiative that uh, recognizes uh, the best uh, films uh, worldwide. Uh, the SIFT circuit, that is the, the competition that is in format of league championship, with different stages around the world, that we have now 10 stages around the world with 10 different festivals. The films are competing in that competition and are winning awards. These awards, they are giving points for the rankings and the SIFT rankings are the tool that determine uh, what are the world's best tourism films at the end of the year. Terrace Festival is one of our members and um, we, have, uh, we are very proud of this cooperation and special with the Terrace Check-In. Actually, let me to give a, a special uh, thanks and, uh, and uh, to Terra's Landscape and Travel Communication and to the foundations of Clement Guitar, Jordi Comas Matmala and the um, SET Foundation. Because uh, the idea to create the Terra Check-In was so, in our opinion, it was so great because it was like you see when it's missing something in the awards created, no? In the world of the in the business of the creative awards, there was always something missing. And Terra Check-In was now uh, creating a, a exclusive competition for that empty space that we have in the audiovisual communication or in the marketing truth video. Uh, for us, um, uh, the hospitality business, we know and we recognize that is one of those that invest most in audiovisual and the marketing, digital marketing, uh, using video. And uh, in that sense, for us, it, uh, it makes sense the Terra Check-In because the Terra Check-In in the model that was designed and concepted um, allows uh, tourism companies and creative agencies and also audiovisual production companies 
to measure the impact of their uh, creative uh, work, no? their videos, their promotional materials, and uh, helps also to the market to understand uh, and benchmark the new trends and the new ideas for the future. So I will uh, give a, a, again a thank you to all these foundations and to Santi and, and Pere and all the involved and all the team, Eric, because this was very creative. It was an excellent idea and we are here to support and to tell the people, if you have a video, send it to Terra Check-In, enter the competition and let's see what happened. An award brings you more than a single advertising more than a single recognition can also be transformed in sales. And uh, the investment that everyone is doing in video can give uh, an excellent return. We have a last study uh, show us that uh, uh, with a nice campaign, digital marketing can uh, represent a ROI of more than 1,400%. Uh, so let's do it. Enter, win awards, and, uh, and, uh, and be creative. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hugo. Now, Elizabeth is going to close the round of introductions with an overview of the Lured Film Office. When you're ready. Hi, good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here today with these uh, speakers. Uh, thanks for the invitation. Thanks, everyone. Um, well, uh, just as an introduction, we are a destination. We're a destination in Costa Brava, uh, north of Barcelona, and uh, we are a tourist board. And uh, we've been working so, 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 so hard for the last, uh, well, at least 20 years in order to position our destination. And the content, this audiovisual content, is absolutely strategic in that sense. Uh, we're a destination that it's uh, in transformation. It's been on the market for the last 60 years already. Um, we work all year round uh, and uh, we try to make excuses to come to visit our destination that it's just one hour away from Barcelona uh, to visit it uh, all year round because we have a lot of events, uh, we have a lot of uh, culture to visit and uh, we have been working so hard to structure uh, all those touristic products that has been key in order to um, make our destination available uh, 360 days uh, per year. One of those products, it's culture, as you can see, Santa Clodilla Gardens. Uh, we've been uh, trying to have uh, all our heritage, cultural heritage back in order to make it open to the public and uh, contribute uh, uh, to uh, uh, all year round destination. In the same sense, we have uh, been specializing uh, the destination, the city, the municipality, and our private sector as a family uh, tourist destination, as we've been certified. The certified the same thing for sports that uh, sports visit uh, cyclists, people playing football from all over Europe. They visit us from January on. Spring, it's absolutely. Uh, the place the start of sports plays a starting role in in the spring in our destination and my meetings and events there's something that it's also so 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 important to work to work all winter to create added value to our our community our community this uh, destination then has been in a complete reconversion in a complete the transformation with a lot of investment in our hoteliers trying to be a destination that belongs to the 21st century as you can see in, in the image something that is very important is that we're doing it with the stakeholders here in in Lorette we're doing with the community the quality of life of our people of our neighbors are uh, absolutely key and it's centric uh, in our strategy. Uh, so in, in that sense, we also uh, work trying to visible that uh, nature, that it's surrounding a destination, that the idea uh, of, uh, of Loret de Mar somehow makes it difficult to think about this amazing uh, natural environment that we're just right in the middle in Costa Brava, and it happens the same with culture. So in that sense, um, mainly as the tourist board, uh, we are the responsible of that content. It's true that we are responsible for the audiovisual content that it's 
understood as institutional, uh, but we also work hard trying to create uh, and in make possible the content uh, for so many other third parties as cre uh, content creators or influencers, because our clients, our visitors, uh, the demand, they trust those uh, third party content. So we also try to uh, well, yeah, invite people and content creators in order to generate that audiovisual content and not only work for the institutional one. So, uh, well, uh, happy to share it with you during the session. Many thanks. Thank you very much. And I think we have a video now. Well, thank you, Elizabeth, for sharing the beautiful Lurette with us and your privileged experience as head of Lurette Tourism. As Hugo has pointed out, the second edition of the Terras Check-In will be held in September, the 13th. This is the first and only international festival specially created to celebrate creativity in the hospitality industry. As one of the key architects involved in the creation of these newly born awards, we'd love to hear Santi tell us more about the program of next edition. So Santi, when you're ready. Okay. Thanks again, Ivana. And, and thanks, uh, Elizabeth, for sharing with us this uh, wonderful video uh, that uh, you know shows all the, the magic of Jared de Mar. Let, let me especially thank Jared Tourisme and the Jared de Mar Tourism Board for its support for, for the second edition of, of Terrace Checking. And, and well, as I explained before, uh, Terras Check-in is much more than a award ceremony. We will dedicate uh, an entire day to explore, celebrate, and learn about the audiovisual applied to the promotion of the tourism services. Our program will include showrooms, study cases, and conferences that will showcase the new trends from the travel video and the immersive tourism technologies. One of the highlights of uh, these two or three last years in our industry. We will announce a program in one month, more or less, but we can say that we will focus on how the tourism industry is facing immersive realities and the, the metaverse. Plus, we will have the honor to come with the presence of one of the most talented and awarded filmmakers in the Tabor Video Circuit, Theo Papadoulakis. Uh, so yeah, at the end, we have an interesting, uh, interesting program that I think will like uh, all of you. So. What is uh, the, the main goal of this project? Well, the main goal is to create an ecosystem where DMOs, marketers, filmmakers, and video producers can meet, uh, learn, and, and share their, their points of view. For example, last year we had winners from Japan, France, Namibia, Greece, um, and Spain. As I had said before, if you have any films that you think that may suit with this competition, stay tuned until the end of this webinar, and we have a little surprise for you. Sunday. We will make sure we don't miss the date. Don't miss the date. September this year. Okay, so we'd now like to open a short Q&A session to further explore the fields of each of our guests. Again, I kindly ask you not to exceed like four or five minutes in your answers to respect everybody's turn. Thank you in advance. So my first question is for Eugenie. Uh, from the tourism marketing perspective, what are the main benefits of the pairing between audiovisual production and tourism, Eugenie? Thank you, Vanna. 
I will, I, of course, I try it. I, I, not, I don't only try it, I will do it. <laughs> um, first of all, uh, uh, before to, to answer your, your question, let me share uh, an interesting figure that uh, reforms the importance and the value of the binomial audiovisual and tourism. According to the 2023 Travel Tense uh, report of Expedia, published two months ago, two months ago, remember that Expedia is the most important OTA online travel agency worldwide. Uh, this uh, report said that the 60, the 60, the 66 percent of travelers have considered visiting a destination after seeing it featured in a series or movies they have streamed at home. And a 39% have booked a trip for the same reasons. As can you imagine with this Expedia report, uh, confirms that streamed movies and series are now the top sources of travel inspiration, overtaking for the first time social media as the, uh, the, first, uh, the first reference. And now, yes, I will try to, I will try to, to answer your, your question. And focusing on, on the marketing of, uh, of the destination and the tourist company after uh, audiovisual productions, uh, we, can, we can specify that films and series shot in a territory or implied in a, in, in a tourist company offer four uh, basic aspects of developing from the film tourism. The first one, positioning the destination or contributing to improve its image. The second one, uh, stimulating and motivating to travel to a place. The third, identifying and capturing new segments of the public. And the fourth, creating film tourist offer. These um, film tourist key factors uh, will report strong benefits for, for destinations in the tourism, if we can say uh, post COVID-19. In terms of tourist image, film tourism can uh, contribute to positioning the destination and to reinforce the brand destination. Concerning the second one, to motivation to travel, uh, field tourism or skin tourism, as you prefer, can help to revive tourism and to combat seasonality, uh, a critical aspect to reduce uh, the over-tourism. The other one, the possibility to cap uh, new segments with cultural motivations will contribute to the seasonal size, uh, tourism and diversify the tourist profiles. And finally, uh, a film tourist offer allows to create uh, new tourist attractions, far of the main and typical icons, and to redistribute tourism, two essential aspects to reduce also uh, over tourism, or as we said now, massification tourism. I think like this, I'm, I, I answer you, I, I hope I answer your question. Yes, you did, Eugenie. Thank you very much. That was very interesting. My next question is for Santi. Are we still on time to submit a film to the second edition of the Terras Check-in? Well, of course, uh, submissions to Terras Check-in are accepted until May 31. So the Toolbit affiliates can benefit a special 50% reduction code, as you can see in this slide. Thanks for, for sharing with us, Pere. Uh, so if you go to our intranet and first of all, you register, uh, you can start the process and then when required, you can put this uh, code, check in 2023 tour with 50 off. And then you will have, uh, you know, uh, this special reduction code of 50% for the submissions of the, of the films to the, to the festival. So, um, well, concerning the professional day, the Turbit affiliates will also have uh, a special code. We will share it with you uh, during the, the next weeks. And tickets will be available once uh, the program is officially presented in a few weeks, as I said before. So stay tuned for this new opportunity to, to share uh, this uh, special event that will take place in the Red de Mar on September 13. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Sandy. I can't wait to discover the wonderful films that will be presented next September. Hugo, as an expert of the international tourist film industry, how important is, in your opinion, audiovisual production in the tourism sector? Um, 
marketing has always played uh, an important role in the business world, no? The, and the rise of the digital technologies uh, transformed uh, the way that uh, tourism is uh, marketed. Um, for other side, the visualization is one of the key uh, in the consumer buying uh, decision. We know that uh, people want to see before they experience it. And the numbers they are showing us is every year and is every year is growing and growing and growing. Um, is this in this context, in this specific context, that this is the audiovisual marketing emerges one of the vital tools? No? Jenny mentioned the series and the film industry, but also the marketing, the advertising, they are helping the destinations or the hotels or a specific product or service to increase sales, to increase the, the confidence in the product and buying the product. Um, this is uh, in the last years we, we saw the, the, the use of video as a grow was growing exponentially. Uh, and it was becoming one of the essential essential component on the digital marketing campaigns for different destinations, uh, hotels, uh, or different uh, service companies. Uh, the ability of to capture the emotion uh, and convey message efficiently, and also the emotional connection that the video can, can, um, can do it with the audience, make it uh, the idea. Uh, um, we have uh, uh, an interesting uh, study, not only from Expedia, but also from Weisel and from uh, uh, Google, that, uh, for example, 54% uh, of uh, travelers opt to watch the video when looking for accommodation, for example, or 66% of uh, uh, travelers are watching videos when they think about taking a trip or watching videos. We have uh, also 63% that uh, travelers are watching videos when they are designing for some specific activity in a location or in a destination. So it's one of the ways to experience. Um, basically, uh, uh, video will uh, increase or it will grow so, so fast. And so it was so important in social media networks that um, it was helping to new uh, business and new destinations to be on the top uh, of mind of uh, the travelers. Uh, and it helps also a lot to develop uh, the countries. This is one of the main reasons, and this is why we depend that everyone should invest in the in the audiovisual more than one. Also, because video gives you more the more um, proximity with your target group, with your clients, and help you to sell as fast as possible. Uh, and there is no other tool that can help you to boost your sales uh, as quick as the the video can do it. This is why we understand that it's so important, of course. And uh, let's give you 88% of people, Weisel said in the last, uh, in the study from 2022, 88% of people say that they have been convinced, convinced to buy a product after watching the video. Uh, and we are talking about uh, uh, tourism products or tourism services is uh, specific uh, for this field. So this is, in our opinion, why it's, it's so important for, for the tourism industry. Thank you Hugo, for sharing your valuable insight with us. And finally, Elizabeth, what do you think will be the effect of hosting the Terras Check-in Festival for Uret? Well, we're absolutely happy and really looking forward uh, to receive uh, every one of you in, in, in Loret de Mar next September. So that's that's the main thing. But we, uh, I mean, audiovisual uh, content, as we were saying, uh, for our marketing strategy and regarding our film office, uh, Loret film office that's been working for the last 17 years. It's such an honor and a pleasure to be hosting an event uh, like Terras Check-In. We had the chance to participate uh, last, uh, last September in, in Barcelona. So nowadays, thanks to uh, Fundación Climen Guitar and the rest of, the, of their partners that are involved in the project, we have uh, the, the chance to be uh, also the, the, to be hosting the event. Uh, we will have a lot of experts, audiovisual experts in our destination and it's to also work as such an inspiration because 
we, uh, this audiovisual content is absolutely key to inspire our clients, to inspire the demand. Uh, and the thing is that it will also be inspiring our private sector, all our stakeholders that uh, will be participating and sending their pieces uh, to Terra's chicken uh, check-in uh, till the 31st of May. So uh, mainly it's a huge opportunity to show the work that our destination has been done, uh, creating content, our own content, trying to incentivate content from third parties and being a leader uh, as a, let's call, holiday resort, having our own film office uh, for already now 17 years with more than 40 shootings every uh, single year, having uh, House of the Dragon, Warner Bros, other uh, streaming platforms like Netflix, Movistar, uh, and also televisions and uh, uh, very important brands uh, shooting also their advertising. So it's a fantastic event to showcase all our experience and a huge opportunity to still positioning and uh, working for the branding of, of Laura de Mar. So we're happy and uh, really looking forward to it. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. I'm sure the second edition of the Terras Check-In in Juret will be a total success. And I must say, I'm, I'm really impressed by you guys. You were so brief that we're ahead of time. So that's great because we have a little more time for the final round uh, of speeches. Uh, as we're reaching the end of the webinar, uh, I think it would be a great idea to, to make a quick round of final thoughts. Uh, you have more than one minute. I just, I told you, I previously told you that it was one minute. You have my, uh, way more time. But you can share your final thoughts or a future wish regarding the connection between audiovisual production and tourism or tips you want to share or something that inspires our audience or whatever you feel like sharing with us, okay? So let's say like two, three minutes per person and we'll respect the same order. So Eugenie, it's your turn, final round. Okay, thank you. Well, I, I more or less, I continue with, uh, with the idea exposed before. And as I, we said before, uh, these last researchers and also as Hugo said, remark that uh, movies and series are sparking wanderlust and influencing our choice of holiday more than ever. That's uh, very important also to, to promote, as we said before, uh, uh, the, the video as the strategic tool for, for companies and for destinations. So uh, without uh, that, the combination of uh, audiovisual and tourism structured and incorporated into the management and marketing plans of tourism destination and tourism companies uh, can become a key element of promotion and brand positioning. Uh, at this level is uh, very, very, very important uh, to be coordinated, public sector and private, and in terms of uh, film commissions or film office and the above of destinations and, and the several and the, the, the diverse uh, companies that uh, work around all this. So uh, finally, to, to resume, um, video in general and the binomial of, um, of uh, audiovisual and tourism are more important than, than ever. So I'm, I'm hope, uh, or I, I hope that, that the most part, uh, a good example is Jure de Mar, for example, uh, can uh, or have a good opportunity uh, not only to promote the destination, also to structure it an important and different uh, offer of tourism linked to audiovisual. Thank you very much, Eugenie. And uh, I, I would like to say to the audience, if you have any questions, or you wanna share any thought, you can use the chat and we'll address that at the end of this final round. So Santi, your turn. Well, uh, I would like to highlight uh, two things that I think that are important in the travel video sector. The, the first is that, uh, you know, brands uh, shall, shall lose fear uh, to humor to introduce humor in their videos, because I think is the one of the, uh, you know, uh, winning trends of this uh, sector, introducing humor in the narratives. And the other key point that I would like to highlight 
is the importance of the uh, solidity of the imagery of the film. So if you have, if you take films, the winning films of last uh, Sift Circuit Edition, for example, one film that I loved was Ophelia de Souza, a film produced by the north of Portugal. Uh, is uh, is an amazing film because uh, film because uh, plays with the imagery of Wes Anderson's films. So all the imagery uh, uh, that uh, this creator or Wes Anderson put to, on the screen was then adapted by filmmakers that uh, take this influence to to sell a, a, a tourism brand. In this case, in this case, Porto, north of Portugal. Maybe Hugo can say a little bit more things on this campaign because it was really, really amazing. So at the end, uh, regarding travel, travel video, and how can we improve travel video in, for our companies, for our brands? Uh, one of the things that we have to do is, you know, uh, to to talk in, in a mature way to the audience and lose fear to the humor, because at the end uh, we are talking to an audience uh, that is uh, more conscious of what are, you know, uh, tourism films or what is travel video. And at the end, uh, these things are, I think they are so important in, in the moment of setting up a script for a travel video. Thank you very much, Santi. Now, Hugo, it's your turn. Yeah, so basically after what we we saw here uh, uh, is very clear. No tourism companies, they should adapt to this new trend and to this, uh, it's not a new trend, but to this uh, growing trend and use audiovisual marketing to connect with uh, their clients more effectively and uh, will be well positioned to succeed in the future. Uh, Santi addressed the case of Ophelia de Souza, Port on North, the tourism Port on North. This was the, 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 the excellent campaign uh, not only the video, but all the process that how the video was produced, how the video was created. So the, um, the briefings before client, agency, production company, the idea, the concept, uh, what the client give to the production company, because it's easy to make a tourism film. No? We take the mobile phone. There is a lot of uh, YouTubers, uh, Instagrammers. Uh, they take a mobile phone and they take nice pictures of a beautiful uh beach or a beautiful mountain or a beautiful dish no ourselves we are doing this no we are in tourism and uh, when we go into a restaurant we have a different uh cuisine or a different dish we just take pictures and you we upload it to so everyone can do it but if you have a strategy if you know your target group if you know in which channels do you want to uh expose your video because the goal of uh, making another visual uh, is different. It changed uh, the years. Uh, in the when SIFT started in 1989, the uh, the goals of making a video is to, if we have budget, let's go to television. It was super expensive, but let's go to television. But nowadays, television was losing uh, to the digital trends, and uh, with less, much less money, you reach much more people, and you make more. Uh, uh, more, um, you, you have a better ROI. Uh, and Porter North was that case. Uh, they know what they want. They give all the, the key factors why, uh, uh, about what the tourists think about tourism Porter North. The agency looked to all these keys and they create a personage, they create a story to promote as an event destination, uh, the north of Portugal. And it was very succeed, it was very succeed, it was, uh, not only because it was the world's best tourism film in the tourism service category, but because all the repercussion, all the incentives, all the meetings and the incentives, the Congress that uh, they, they, they have, and they have an agenda now for the next years, they put a, 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 a waypoint. This is one of the, the, the people, and I, I love that Santi addressed this subject. You can search uh, on uh, Google for a case study uh, Ophelia de Souza, you'll find the, from the Kobu agency in the website of Kobu agency. They will have the they have the the case study there. You can take a look. They were very transparent with all the process, and you can see all the process step by step how the idea became in that great film. Thank you very much, Hugo. And now the final speech of Elizabeth, please. 
Well, just regarding everything that my colleagues are just uh, sharing uh, about the, the the importance about the how strategic how the ritual can be for territories, for regions, for for cities or or destinations like like ours. We have here uh, Augeni. Uh, he's one of uh, the the expert or the expert in in Spain regarding film tourism. And from our side, as 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 a as a local example of a film office or a film commission, I can I couldn't agree more. The thing is that uh, we have, uh, in our case, for example, we have the location that is one hour away from a metropolitan metropolitan area from an audiovisual hub. Obviously, from our for for our colleagues in in the islands or Balearic Islands or Canary Islands, they have wonderful uh, landscape too. But uh, they're not just one hour away from from a big city as we are from Barcelona, for example. So location, landscape, and services uh, make uh, the every those three uh, key points makes us really uh, well a, a very easy destination to come over and um, and shoot. Your your productions, your uh, or cinema productions, or uh, TV series, TV program productions, as you can have everything in in a very small and comfortable place like like our destination, like Loret de Mar. So, as we were discussing, we also have the direct impact of a uh, uh, touristic product as it is itself, because they come during autumn, winter, even spring, and they have as they had for Mrs. Davis, Warner Bros, uh, that you can watch nowadays in, in, in HBO. Mrs. Davis, they stayed for nearly four weeks during autumn, 200 people. Uh, they used, uh, it's not that, uh, I mean, they paid for absolutely everything they need from, 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 the, city, uh, from the city hall, from the municipality, uh, for the services that we, that we share for, for occupying uh, public space, for example. Uh, so, but they stay here, they use our accommodation services, they use our, uh, well, hospitality in general terms, services, uh, restaurants, caterings, and other type of services, technical companies that builders, uh, all type of um, uh, providers, they also receive the impact of having uh, shootings in our destination, but then it comes all this huge uh, not direct impact. This international impact that we have being on screens of, uh, uh, well, sometimes all over the world. And it's not us as an institutional um, company or as a DMO telling everyone in the world how handsome we are, because obviously we don't have the possibility to impact uh, all those people, all, all these amount of people. The thing is that someone else is talking, is, has uh, chosen our destination in order to um, be the gardens of uh, a wonderful villa uh, for House of the Dragon, for example, or the best beach in Thailand as Uncharted, uh, Uncharted decided that Cala Guadella was uh, supposed to be Thailand or we were Morocco once uh, the time we had uh, the, the shooting of Sahara. So um, the thing is that uh, this this direct impact of the shooting and this indirect impact uh, of uh, this international promotion for a destination like us is a huge opportunity. So that's that. And that's what Eugenie was sharing. Also, this film tourism, people visiting us only because we were the location of this and that or the other. So uh, we also have specific products and guided tours. So the added value of the audiovisual uh, community in, in, in our destination, in our territory, it's, uh, well, uncountable. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. Um, to sum up what you've highlighted in your final rounds, uh, I'd like to highlight that the utmost relevance of uh, audiovisual tools for tourism, the importance of connecting private and public sector, of introducing humor in the narrative and uh, to treat uh, your audience as adults. Also to um, do a, a thorough job when working on your strategy uh, to personalize your strategy as a key to success. And also the importance of enhancing shootings in your uh, beautiful privileged destinations. Thank you very much. It was great having you in the webinar. 
And now we're going to connect back to Leonie and Enrique for final remarks. I think there's a few more remaining questions and conclusions. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks for having me and have a great day. So I'll give the floor to Leonie and Enrique. Thank you very much, Ivana. Actually, I simply, uh, before you, you leave, actually, we wanted to shoot a few questions on you that have uh, reached me through the chat. Um, if you are um, available for a few more minutes, I would like to just shoot them on you. Uh, one of the question was, um, how does audiovisual marketing contribute to building brand loyalty? Is there someone who could take that question from our panel of experts? Well, I, uh, I can start, but I think Hugo later on will, you know, put the, the, the key points of that. Uh, more or less, we have explained before that uh, obviously the video uh, uh, helps to uh, maintain the the ROI of the campaigns and the, the awareness of the of the, of the brands. There are some studies that 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 uh, show the key points of why doing this. But at the end, uh, investing in audiovisual is is always a good strategy for a for a brand. Uh, as I said before, Hugo Marcos uh, will uh, give you more details on, on this question. Yeah, actually, uh, for example, in the hospitality industry, focus on hotels. Hotels are very expert on using the video to create more loyalty with clients, not only for selling the product of the loyalty card, but also creating this brand loyalty, this concept, this, uh, but also some destinations regarding a specific subject, a specific product. We have a uh, several examples um, on the how succeed uh, they were with some campaigns just to keep the top of mind of the brand or just to connect the brand with some social impact and to create this loyalty with these uh, destinations. We see also the other side, no? we see a lot of brands that ah, I have a big city, I have a lot of tourism, I don't need video to advertise the cities. And uh, it was happening a few years ago, and now they are changing the mind because, yeah, if you are not on the top of mind, uh, the people are start looking for different uh, destinations. And nowadays, with the globalization, it's easy to reach any destination. And even destinations that you don't know um, uh, so well as others, they are taking advantage on or getting position in front of these ones. So the loyalty in, in, in different kind of uh, in, in different kind of service, in destinations is different, but hotels, for example, it works perfectly. Uh, I don't have now the data here, but I can, uh, if the person can send me an email or something, I can share some of the examples of uh, videos from hotel chains or uh, brands that they were increasing the loyalty, uh, keeping, basically using video as a main tool uh, to create this loyalty. Perfect. Thank you very much for this very, uh, concise answer. Um, uh, for anyone who would like to reach out to our speakers in our online community, Turbit online community, you can directly reach out to them. They're always uh, they're there. Uh, their uh, profiles are uh, linked there. So if you have any questions you want to uh, pose after this webinar to them, this is the way you can get to them. Um, we have one uh, more question uh, in the chat that relates to emerging trends in the audiovisual marketing. So I'm not quite sure if this question uh, goes into the direction that I understand it, but I was thinking also about uh, new technologies as augmented or virtual reality that um, uh, maybe nowadays are still niche um, yeah, technologies, but what's your opinion? Is that an emerging trend or uh, what other trends uh, could you think of, apart from the one that we have pr uh, already heard about that is introducing humor into uh, the narratives of your videos? Um, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I can say something. Um, Please. You, you point already to uh, augmented reality, virtual reality is not a new trend, but it's still a trend. A lot of people are using this for an immersive experience, but Santi can give more uh, more details about this because he has uh, already more expertise on this 
than me, but I will, would like to highlight two new trends or two booming or growing uh, ideas. TikTok and uh, Reels, the vertical videos. Even YouTube is changing already. They have already a channel for vertical videos. So uh, the, the snack content that is 15 seconds, 20 seconds, uh, TikTok even increased the, the, the possibility and the Reels also increased the, 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 the length of the, the, the videos. Uh, why? Because nowadays the mobile, the vertical data, uh, the vertical uh, screen help us to faster grow. This is snack contents and more people are investing now in special hotels, but also tourism destinations are investing a lot. I remember in Spain, Benidorm is one of the highlights. They are in Twitch, they are in any kind of, uh, they have a specific team working for, for uh, social networks. Um, but I, I will keep uh, the TikTok and the Reels of for Instagram and the vertical video was one of the, the new trends and the, the future for the next communication strategy. Not only that, we need to understand that tourism marketing should be an integrated communication with image and video, moving image and also banners or photos because they are the, the two tools they are creating more impact and generating more feedback and more income. But uh, thank you for pointing the augmented reality and 360 degrees video because it's, it's incredible. There is still, still a lot to do and there are new trends coming. Santi, I think, Santi, you can say more things about it. Yeah, in fact, one of the, the, the things that I love from the ISI last edition in Barcelona was the fact that, uh, that we could uh, stay in contact with lots of experiences that are uh, pushing for the immersive tourism. For example, we shared a panel with uh, Lavinia that is, uh, you know, uh, creating a, sp a special initiative for the tourism information uh, spots in, in, in all kind of equipment, and they are really highlighting the, the, the immersive, uh, the, the uh, no, immersive audiovisual experiences for the people that come to visit a place, and I think that's the way. And not only Lavinia, but also uh, Idea Barcelona. I think in the, in the Red de Mar, we will know uh, soon a special uh, activity in, in the castle uh, that, that, that we will visit in, on, the, on September 13th for, for, for terrace check-in. That is, a, is also a very interesting experience in the immersive tourism. So at the end, there are lots of uh, companies and more of, the, more of them uh, here in, in Catalonia and Spain that push for this new trend. So yeah, why not mm, uh, taking it uh, as, as, as a reality and, and assuming that the, the new consumer expects uh, the audiovisual in, in every kind of uh, contact with the tourism uh, sector. And as I said before, uh, we could share more experiences and points of view of uh, immersive uh, tourism and metaverse in Terrace Check-In on September 13, and you're all invited. Perfect. Thank you very much. So on my side, I don't have uh, any further questions. And actually, it's 10.30 sharp. We have started one minute late, so we have still one minute, I guess, to thank everyone uh, for their participation in this webinar. It has been really a great pleasure to uh, listen to all of you. Thank you very much, Ivana, for moderating this session. And again, to Enrique for uh, bringing all the people uh, together here today. Um, just as a final note, I have put in the chat the access link to our online community. If you're not there yet, I just uh, mentioned it before. It's a very um, uh, yeah, nice way to connect with experts, with peers. We have also a big pool of providers. Uh, there are also experts on marketing uh, and on audiovisual and content production there. So if as an SME, as a a business you are now very much motivated uh, to dig into this um, yeah, world of audiovisual marketing and productions. I'm sure that in our community you will also be able to find a right provider um, for you. So um, that's all from my side. Again, uh, thank you very much to everyone. Have a great day, everyone, and hope to see you in our next webinar. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank we'll you very much. much. Bye. Thank you. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you soon. Bye-bye.
It was a pleasure. Thank you. Bye.